Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review, which is a bit of a weird one because I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this may never have heard of this brand. Not necessarily the main brand, but sort of the offshoot from the brand. And it's this. It is the, look at that. Look at that. It's a Homna Birez Azu Irons. Now, if you've never heard of Birez, I, hopefully I'm saying that right. I have looked it up. Um, Basically, it's a premium, 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 premium Japanese version from Honda. So Honda is quite a lot out over here in the UK and America. It's a relatively biggish brand. I remember a couple of years ago, they signed up Justin Rose, you know, to really help them sort of get into the West market. Didn't really work, but they do produce some really good stuff especially on the second-hand market because you tend to find it really cheap because people don't think of it, especially their drivers. Do check them out. But I really wanted to try this Berez sign. Berez, I'm just going with it now, going with it. Berez, because, like I said, it's really, really premium. It's so expensive, these irons. It is crazy. And I managed to pick up myself a 7-iron. It's actually a fitting one, but still, I managed to pick one up to give it a go for you guys and to let you know my thoughts. Now this is, as I mentioned, the Honda Birez Azu iron. It's the three S, so three stars. You can just see them there. You do have more stars. I think it goes two all the way up to five. Yes, with two being sort of the well, they're all very very premium, but sort of the least premium, all the way up to the five star, which is you know the creme de la creme. And it's not necessarily the head where the cost of this is. It's the shafts. That's where the changes happen when you go from two star to three star to four star to five star. Don't get me wrong, the de decor changes on these clubs, but it's the shafts that are the main things. So there you go, a little bit of insight before we really get into this video. Now, as always, what we're going to do, we're going to have a closer look at this club and the shaft, because I'm not going to lie, it is a piece of artwork, this. Um, come back here, go for all the technology that's in the club, get down to the range, throw some figures at you, and then come back here for the ACS Golf Scale. All right, let's have a closer look at this striking club. So there you go, really good looking club there. Beautiful thing. I mean, it is a chunky, <laughs> chunky game improvement iron, do not get me wrong, but the artwork on the back of them is gorgeous. And the shafts themselves as well. Really, really a lot of detail go into these clubs. Now let's go into the technology that's in here. So tradition, so beautiful traditional Japanese Azu Lacquer Designs, the premium Birez brand combines world-class quality and performance with additional and colourful Japanese artwork on each club head. Now these change throughout the set, so the two star tends is white here and the white shaft, three star gold, four star gold and red, and then five stars like a really dark red and gold. So it changes throughout the set. So basically if you know your clubs, you'll be able to see straight off the bat if it's a three, two star, three star, four star or five star club. Going to technology, so 3D L cup structure, 5 iron through to 9 iron, so just behind the face here. High repulsion improves initial ball speed thanks to the 3D L cup structure and sole slots. There you go. A thicker sole ensures that ultra low center of gravity delivers a high launch angle. Perfect. You know, it's game improvement irons. We'll get into loss in a second, but these are really strong lofted. So, of course, you know, you need to make sure you get the ball in the air to get it stopping because you're not going to be getting as much spin as you normally would in normal seven iron to get it to stay on those greens. Moving on, you've got the sole slots. So inside and outside sole slots generate high repulsion, 
The outside toe slot, there you go, also provides high repulsion on off-centered hits towards the toe. Face structure, repulsion, <laughs> love this word, is improved by a thinner face. Vertical slits low in the face, so low in the face, all right, sort of around sort of here. That's what's from the diagram we're looking at at the moment. Vertical slots low in the face, reinforce the impact there, providing strength, durability, and forgiveness, and shot shapeability. Uh, shot stability, sorry, shot stability. I was going to say shapeability, you're not going to be able to shape a cup this size that well. I did do a test of it actually, um, and I'll go into this now. You can hit it low, you can definitely hit it higher, definitely a draw, easy. Getting that fade, not too easy, to be honest. It's a slight one, but not the easiest things to move around, as you'd expect. Moving on, so optimal cavity structure, so 5 to 9, chain, and then it changes from 10 to sandwich. 10, by the way, is a pitching wedge, that's what Homna does. Um, so enlarging the lower part of the cavity increases low, deep low CG, progressively changing the cavity design by loft. The ideal trajectory for each club is achieved. So there you go, so you know, thoughts, progressive set throughout the set there. You know, with the weaker lofts, you don't particularly want to get it in the air as much as you do with those sort of stronger loft, longer irons, because then the, the ball basically just balloon in the air and not go anywhere. So they, they change it and actually move the center of gravity a little bit further up the club head, while with the five to nine is very much near the bottom. So going into the shafts now. So all the shafts are different. So two S, two star, three star, four star, five star. They're all different. They're all slightly changed. And like the materials used, etc. It's all a little bit different. So I'm going to go through the three star one. If I go for all of it, we'll be here forever. Um, because that's what I have in this shaft. But just going into its original shaft, the ARMRQMX, the new 10 axis sheet material consists of four axis aluminium and six axis carbon. So not just carbon in here. The counterbalance design helps golfers increase swing speed and stronger shafts applies narrow shot dispersion. Ooh, perfect, exactly what you want. So going to the three star shaft, Shaft includes high strength M40X, industry leading high elasticity Toray composite that drives both fiber strength and elastic modules to the utmost limit, accelerating the high speed efficiency without waste. The shaft also combines priority 10 axis sheet metal hybrid armor technology, tongue twister there, and T1100G carbon to deliver counterbalance designs for added club head speed and stability. Now, just say when you go into the five star, for example, five star has the lowest, just give you the differences, five star has the lowest torque and are the most technologically advanced in the 08 collection. T1100G is used for bias layer, producing strong twisting power, maximum flight distance. So, there you go. So, just gave you an example about the five star there. It does change when you go through the club, so do be aware of that. And the price does change as well. We'll get into that when we go for the ACS Golf Scale. Now, getting into the loss of these clubs, they only have a five iron, so it's five iron all the way down to Sandwich. Um, basically, and it's a weird one actually because the five isn't really a five, I'd say more, it's a five's a four, and then you have. Yeah, it's, it's very strange because they, technically the number of irons goes 5 to 11. The 11 for me is a pitching wedge, and then you've got a gap wedge, AW, so 50, so approach wedge, and then you've got your sound wedge, 55. So even though they don't do a 4 iron, the 5 iron is pretty much a 4 iron. It might not be the length of a 4 iron, but the loft very much is um, because they say the 5 iron loft is 21 degrees. It's, you know, it's a strong 4 iron, really. Or more normal sort of iron. Six iron is 24 degrees. Seven iron is 27 degrees. So this is a strong lofted seven iron. Eight iron, 31 degrees. And then you've got your nine iron, 35 degrees. And then you'd have your pitching wedge, which is they're calling the 10 at 10 at 40 degrees. And then this number 11 club at 45 degrees. So it is a five iron because of the length of the shaft. But loft wise, it's more of a four. And that's why they've got that extra sort of number 11 in there because the gapping just wouldn't work because your pitching wedge is so strong at 40 degrees. So do be aware of that. But that's the whole point about it, you know. These are game improvement irons. 
lots of technology in them, you know, just to help you get them in the air. I mean, look at the size of them, they are massive. Um, just talking about the shaft as well, you can get stiff, stiff, um, soft regular looks like regular and that's it. So, no, sorry, stiff, senior and regular. So you can't get these an extra stiff, just be aware. Um, which I'm not surprised because they are sort of, I can't imagine they're built for quick swing players, to be honest. For me, stiff would be perfect. This is actually regular. And actually, to be fair, I've tried regular graphite before and had real issues with it because of my swing speed. But this, even though it's regular, is very, very stable. It is a lovely, lovely shaft. All right there, guys. There's all the technology that's in this club. Now, let's get down to the range. I'm going to throw some figures at you and we'll come back here for the ACS Golf Scale and I'll give you my overall thoughts about this club. I'm down at the range now let's jump straight into those figures so on average I had a carry of 155 yards total distance 164 yards ball speed 119 miles per hour launch angle 15 and height 67 because this shaft in this club was a graphite regular shaft I didn't really go for it straight away I was trying to be more controlled with my swing just to see you know how it would perform with that slower swing speed which this club is made for however i thought i'd put the basically put the, some power on it near the end to really see the distance potential of this club you know and then when i started doing that then suddenly i was getting a carry of 165 yards on average you know i was getting the ball distance all the way up to 174 yards total distance ball speed was jumping up to 123 miles per hour so you know, if I had a stiff shaft in this, this club would go miles, which I would expect because it is a 27 degree 7 iron, basically, which is really strong. I also wanted to try sort of the movement of this club because obviously it is a big game improvement iron. And to be fair, if I wanted to hit it high, I could. If I wanted to hit lower, I could. Fading it was a bit more of a struggle, but overall there is some movement in it. So what can I say? Some interesting figures with it, to be fair, which I think is down more to me than the club itself. Now, as I mentioned, you know, 164 yards on average with a carry of 155 is, you know, really nice. Is what I'd expect my sort of, sort of you know, more sort of game improvement iron or sort of players distance iron to do. You know, with these lofts being 27 degrees, I would have expected to be further. However, it did take me a while to get used to this shaft and to realise, even though it's a regular, I could actually really go for it. And when I did... You know, I was suddenly getting a carry of 165 yards. I was getting total distance of 174 yards, which I would expect from basically a club this size and a loft of 27 degrees. So once I sort of got over the fear of a graphite shaft and realized it really was very stable, then yeah, then I got some really impressive figures with it for distance-wise, which I would expect. And also really nice height. It was getting the ball up in the air. Lovely. So I cannot complain about that. Now let's get into the ACS golf scale. So we've got distance, feel, looks, price and forgiveness. Five being the best, one being the worst. Wait until you hear about the price aspect. Crazy. Um, so distance, I've given it 4.5 out of 5. As I mentioned, once I realised the shaft I could really go for it, I got over that sort of graphite fear that I've had before because I have used, I've reviewed, reviewed another club that had graphite in it regularly and it was just all over the place. Just way too light, way too flexible, but this really is stable. Um, I got some really good distance out of it, as I'd expect, with 27 degree head. So 4.5 out of 5, it's going to go a long way. So be aware of that. I mean, this is basically a 6 iron, and I was getting, well, when I really went for it, like I normally do with golf clubs, um, I was getting my 6 iron distances, even with my JPX uh, hot metal that I've got in Hot Metal Pro. That I currently have in the bag, so it does go a long way. Um, let's go into looks. I'm giving it a five just because, even though I do not like big, chunky things, you know, I really don't. I mean, I know I am playing game improvement irons at the moment, technically, you know, JPX um, Hot Metal Pro, they are a smaller package, so you sort of not really game improvement just below that, but they're in a smaller package. They're really, really nice. I'm not a big fan of these huge things like this. But I'm giving it a 5 out of 5 because look at the artwork in it. The timing they've done to do all this, you know, to put that in. The shaft itself is beautiful. You know, the gold as well. 
in the grip, the golf pie grip, and then once you change it, the colors change, etc. If you actually get the irons, because I said this is a fitting one, you have a little logo at the back there as well. It, they're very, very pretty. They're artwork. So for me, five out of five. They really are a gorgeous thing. Moving on to let's do forgiveness first. So forgiveness, I've given it a 4.5 out of 5. Big, chunky, forgiving, as you'd expect. Nearly miss a face, you know, a few times just to really test it. Absolutely fine. Exactly what I'd expect. Nothing really to drop down from that. You know, a lot of the time the ball speed went 119 miles per hour. Add a few down the 114 mark, but that was just really me just, you know, really hitting it really poorly. So forgiveness is there it is very good and due to the stability of the shaft as well so i'm very consistent very consistent with its ball flight and shot shape so yeah 4.5 out of 5 when it comes down to forgiveness a great thing moving on to let's do feel first and price last feel so i i did mention it is a forged face uh, as a lot of these clubs are nowadays you know they'll say forged but it's actually just a face and the rest of the sort of iron is cast they may do it you know ping do it, i think ping do it you know a lot of them do it nowadays you know to increase that feel so they always feel nice but they don't feel nice as nice i'd say as a full body forged iron with this it felt immense i mean i actually generally thought the whole thing was forged by the feel of it and I was surprised as well because of the size of it. You know, I didn't expect something this big to feel that nice. Um, it was only too recently when I read up the, you know, all that tech information about it, that I realized it was actually just a forged face. It is beautiful. It's soft. It's lovely. It's springy off the face. It feels fantastic. One of the best irons I've actually felt, um, to be honest, even though it's that size. I mean, you know, you, when it comes down to some irons, you pay a lot of money for them. You sort of look at it and you play it, and you're like, "Well, I can't really see that." I don't know why I've got, I haven't gone for a cheaper set. With this, I can feel it. I, I can feel it's an expensive iron. I can feel that they've really taken their time with it to produce it and to make it right. You know, it's it, it is absolutely gorgeous. So feel wise, I've given it five out of five. I never thought I'd be giving a game improvement iron five out of five. It's insane. Don't get me wrong, I've, I've given Game Improvement Irons quite high ratings before, like the JPXs, Mizuno, I love them. They feel really nice as well. Um, but it's just another level above it, to be fair. Really just felt beautiful. Absolutely, the whole thing with the shaft again, I've mentioned the shaft quite a few times. Just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So five out of five. So there you go. We've had distance, we've had feel, we've had looks, and we've had forgiveness. Now on to the main sticking point about about these irons and probably why you don't see them around well i've never seen any of these irons on the golf course i think in asia you probably will quite a lot but the price of them is ridiculous so six to eleven i've found over in the us for, so the three star over in the us you can buy them for three thousand five hundred and ninety four dollars three thousand five hundred and ninety four dollars to six to eleven for these irons and that's a three star like don't get me wrong a lot of the big iron brands you know you're looking at the one thousand five hundred dollars you're looking at two thousand dollars etc now for the in the main brands your tailor mades you know your brand new mizunos etc that but this is like another fifteen hundred pounds on top and even though they look beautiful they feel beautiful do i think these are going to perform any better then your Mizunos, your tailor-made, etc. No, 100% not. I mean, if anything, I think they'd probably perform a little bit better than these, personally. It is insane amount of money. So in the UK, that would be £2,428, roughly, if you're buying it in the exchange rate, because I can't find these for sale in the UK. Find Honda for sale in the UK, which, again, is generally an expensive brand anyway, but the Burez is like another level up. So, you know, you're looking at £2,400 in the UK if you can get your hands on them. And then again, hold on, you're spending another £1,000. Wow, maybe not as much, but you're, you're you know, £800 to £1,000 more than your general brand anyway. It's insane, insane amount of money. And this is the three-star, by the way. If you want to pick up the five-star, 
<laughs> so the five star i found them did find them because i thought i had to check this out you're looking closer to twelve thousand pounds for a set of the five star irons oh twelve thousand pounds for a set of the irons that is insane money to be spending i mean you could I don't think you need kit out a like brand new tailor made bag all the way through for twelve thousand pounds. I'm pretty sure you'd have like loads of chains left if you tried to do that. That is insane amount of money for a set of irons. It really is. You know, they're very much one of these sets, a bit like PHG, what they used to be you know, I don't know, about five five years ago sort of thing, where they're very much a look at me, look what I've got. You know, I've got money to spare, sort of thing, rather than performance wise you know PXG have now dropped their prices and that more of the performance and sort of trying to really take on the big guys while these very much are a luxury item You've got more money than cents then they are perfect for you because that's such an insane price really is really is don't get me wrong they have great irons they feel great i love the look of them even though they are game improvement they go far they've got great forgiveness you know the shafts i really like the shafts the feel of it everything is really really good is it worth for these irons anyway three thousand five hundred pounds oh, that's no i just know i personally know so price so five being the best one being the worst i've given this a one i have given this a one i've had to do it i've given it a one even though it's an amazing iron it is a luxury item it really really is um so yeah so i think you know if you're looking at the golf aspect of it you can save yourself a lot of money by getting an iron that is just as good as this maybe you're getting a whole bag for the same price of this to be fair so for that reason price is a one out of five even though i love this iron i think it's great i really enjoyed hitting it and that's the main thing about golf it's enjoying hitting these things um and i've really enjoyed bringing this review to you guys it has to be a one out of five i mean i'm really lucky i managed to pick this up to be fair because it was a fitting because it was a fitting one i managed to get it on the cheap because believe me i didn't pay about 300 pounds or whatever for the iron i did manage to get this cheap because it's a fitting iron but yeah great fun reviewing it great fun hitting it but i won't be getting myself a full set anytime soon all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this review of the homna birez azu irons very much a luxury luxury item you know let's call him the rolls royce there you go the rolls royce of golf equipment i think there is i think that's a good good way of calling him to be fair you know really really cool cool to try but not if you want to be uh saving the pounds so there you go all right guys as always if you enjoyed this video remember to give it a like comment down below you know have you tried Bureau's stuff you know do you play with Bureau's irons i know the older stuff you can find them cheap there is always birres as well it's out there that isn't this sort of two star three star four star there are some more sort of basic stuff they bring out which are a lot cheaper you know let me know down in the comments below if you tried them and you know also let me know what you think about the price you know would you spend say for the five star twelve thousand dollars for a set of these well not these ones but the five star ones let me know in the comments down below and do remember to subscribe to the channel guys uh hit that subscription button as i just mentioned and the bell icon bell icon for you bell icon uh, so you do not miss out on weekly golf reviews you know brand new stuff and also little random bits such as this all right guys i'll see you soon for the next acs golf video see you then bye, -bye.